All right, this video is for my fellow audio nerds. I know you're out there. Hi guys, this is Tyler at Alder Audio, and today I'm talking about impedance. Um, it's kind of a random topic for somebody like me who makes ribbon mics to be talking about, but I suppose, uh, you know, like I've been in audio for a really long time, and even just as a personal, you know, enthusiasm type of thing, and uh, I suppose this is the, the video I wish I could have given myself when I was about 18 years old. Impedance is this topic where there's tons written about it online, and some of it's helpful, and some of it's hurtful, and it's all confusing. And uh, I suppose I thought that the internet, like, deserved a better explanation of audio impedance. All right, so if this is a topic that you've always found mysterious and kind of harder to get a fundamental understanding of, um, I think that this video is going to be really helpful to you. Uh, for those of you who maybe found this from the technical side, uh, I run this little company called Alder Audio. I make ribbon microphones, and you can check that all out at alderaudio.com. Um, but this video isn't really about the microphones. It's really just something I wanted to do, all right? So uh, let's get started. We're going to use some uh, chalk markers here. And uh, I really only have one equation I'm going to write down. If you look up impedance, it gets like mathematically crazy. Um, but the way I've come to understand it, uh, I can kind of explain it in a little bit more of a conceptual way uh, rather than getting into the weeds. But we, we do need one equation, all right? And so it's just classic, like, Ohm's law. Okay, so uh, V voltage equals current times resistance. V equals IR. Um, impedance is simply the AC version of resistance, and we use Z. So it, it, instead of V equals IR, it's you know V equals IZ. And uh, on the face of it, you'd think like, okay, well that seems really straightforward. But the reason that this gets complicated is that anything in AC can change with the frequency. So uh, the impedance might not be the same or almost always isn't the same at 1000 hertz as it is at 100 hertz or 50 hertz, which means it affects how things sound. Okay, And that's why we care about it and that's why it gets really complicated. Okay, But we're going to start here, just V equals IZ and I, uh, I really like to rearrange this equation to say that the voltage over the current equals the impedance. This is a great way to start thinking about impedance, okay? So um, anything that outputs a signal has an output impedance, and that output impedance is simply the voltage and current, the ratio of the voltage and current, that that source sort of like naturally sits at when it outputs at that frequency. So. Like, let's say we've got a microphone at a thousand hertz. It's listening to a thousand hertz sine wave and it's, you know, outputting a signal. That signal is going to have a voltage and a current. And it's going to naturally kind of, uh, you know, sit somewhere if it was just in a, a closed loop. And where that naturally sits, that ratio is the output impedance of that microphone at a thousand hertz. And it's often reported at a thousand hertz, like if you read microphone specs. Um, but it, impedance does change with frequency, which is what that's kind of the whole reason why it gets complicated. Um, and we'll get into that. But to start with, it's just really nice to think of it as a ratio of the voltage uh, to the current. So like let's let's imagine that with a graph here. All right. So let's let's imagine it's a thousand hertz. Okay, thousand hertz sine wave, and uh, you know I'm going to be talking mostly in reference to microphones, but you know this could be a guitar pickup, uh, it could be really anything that produces a signal, and uh, you know this has a signal at a thousand hertz, and we're going to imagine the voltage being in red here. Right. Not a perfect sine wave, but it'll do. Um, so I'm imagining the voltage being that wave in red, but it also has a separate wave that that is current, and I'm going to represent the current in blue. So let's say the current's down here. All right. So uh, voltage in red, current in blue, at a thousand hertz. Okay. Now if you try to like 
Wikipedia impedance or look up anything on it, you're going to get tons of math equations. And some of them are going to be concerned. It's, it's all still this. It's the ratio between the voltage and the current. But some of them are going to be concerned with phase. And that's going to get into like imaginary numbers and all kinds of crazy stuff. In audio, we're not worried about phase. Pretty much, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time. And so um, we're just worried about the height of this, this current to the height of that voltage. And so these getting out of phase and stuff, you know, that, that doesn't really apply to us. Um, and so, you know, the impedance is just the, the ratio of this height here to that height here. So like, let's say that the voltage, let's say that this height here is, is 10. All right, so th these are gonna be like made up uh, round numbers. And then let's say that the, the current here is, is five. All right, so at 1,000 hertz, if the voltage is 10 and the current is 5, then the impedance is going to be 2. All right, so it's, it's five over, 10 over 5. So the impedance is 2. Okay, now, like I said, what gets complicated is that this is not the same at all frequencies. And so let's imagine that we're down at 100 hertz. Okay. 100 hertz has a different wavelength. So instead of having something like this, we're just going to imagine a bit something a bit wider. All right. So that's that's uh, oh. Oh, that is voltage. What we're imagining to be voltage at 100 hertz, and then the current. Uh, let's try here. I don't know how well I've gotten close to scale, but let's imagine that the voltage was 10, again, the amplitude of the voltage. But in this case, because we're at 100 hertz as our example, say that uh, you know, the, the, Im the impedance is not going to be the same. So let's say that uh, down here, this is not the scale at all, but like, let's imagine that down here the current is 1. Okay. So if it's 10 and 1, then in this case, our impedance is 10. Right? 10 over 1. Um, and this, though these numbers are like ballpark, like made up impractical numbers, um, this is generally the case, especially with microphones. The impedance goes up as the frequency goes down. Okay, so I'm representing this at 100 hertz. If the same trend were to be true, if you went down to 50 hertz, the impedance would be even higher. Okay, and the reason that that's important is that this is all going to interact with what you plug the device into your your microphone, your pickup, whatever your you know signal device is. When you plug it into something, um, this is all going to interact. Okay, so uh, let's try to visualize that. So let's let's imagine we are dealing with a microphone. I'm pretty rough drawing of a microphone. Yeah, it'll do. Um, so you know we have a signal coming out of the microphone on, on this mic cable, and. Uh, it's going to get plugged into something, you know, a preamp, an audio interface, uh, something like that. And uh, that input stage is going to have some type of resistance inside of it, okay? And basically, it's just gonna look like this. Like, it's just going to go through a loop with a resistance to it, but there is going to be something that taps in to that loop that, uh, that it's going to be some type of transistor-based amplification circuit, okay? And whatever this is over here, this is a, a FET or if it's an op amp or whatever it is, it's going to read the voltage. It's not going to worry about the current. It's going to read what is the voltage of the source, and then it's going to, you know, lead to an amplified signal based on the variation in only the voltage, only the red part, not the blue part. Okay. Now let's imagine that this resistor here is five. Okay. So R equals five in this case. I guess we can draw it up here. But even though this resistor value is five, we're in AC. So that that resistor in this circuit is the impedance 
of the circuit. So in this case, the impedance equals five. That means that whatever microphone signal goes through this little loop with this resistor in it, the ratio of the voltage to the current has to be five. All right, so this resistor, it's kind of like putting your thumb over a garden hose. It's got a restrictive action on the signal. And what's gonna happen with the signal is in order for this ratio to equal five, something is going to have to bounce back, essentially, in the signal, because you're not gonna add any signal. Something has to get reduced. And if you look at these two examples, you have voltage of 10, uh, current of five, inside of this, this example of 1,000 hertz, um, in order for this ratio to get to five, the current has to get reduced. And right? so the current is gonna come down here to a two in this example. And right? so when this 1,000 hertz signal goes through this five ohm resistor, you know, the voltage to the current has to equal five. And so the, the voltage is 10, the current is five, the current gets knocked down to two in order to make that happen, all right? Now, what happens over here in our 100 hertz example? In this example, you have 10 and one, and so we need this ratio to, to get to five. And so instead of the current getting reflected, you're going to reflect some voltage. So this voltage is going to come down in this case to 5. All right, so you got voltage of 5, current of 1, you know, 5 over 1 is uh is an impedance of 5. Okay, and this is basically the big concept that uh that I've never seen explained very well. Okay, so the, the, the essential thing going on is that you've got a signal, you know, going into some kind of input stage. When that input stage has a resistor, it's going to restrict the, the, the flow of the input. But depending on the output impedance of the signal and the value of the, the input resistance, which this is equal to what they call input impedance, so you have an output impedance value on the spec of your microphone, but on the input of whether it's an XLR input or a, if it's a quarter inch, you know, for guitar or something like that, um, it's going to have an input impedance value, okay? Ba uh, there's going to be an interaction between those two things, and that interaction is going to cause either current or voltage to be reflected, okay? And uh, the, the, the big thing here is that the transistor-based input stage here, it only reads voltage, okay? So up here at 1,000 hertz, the voltage is gonna be untouched. It's gonna be transmitting uh, the full voltage into your input stage. But as you get lower, and as the output impedance of your microphone, in this case, uh, gets higher, you're gonna start reflecting voltage, and that means that you're gonna lose your low end, okay? And so the more of, a, of an impedance mismatch you have, increasingly in the low end, the more low end you, you lose, basically. And so this is where the whole rule of thumb comes from to say that your input impedance of your device should be 10 times as much as the output impedance of your source, your microphone or your pickup. Um, it's so that all the way down into the low frequencies, you're, what, what ideally would be happening is that you're always reflecting uh, current and that your voltage never gets touched. You're getting the full signal. That's the idea behind that, that 10x or 5x rule. It's kind of uh, a shorthand. And it's, it's a weird because, um, Microphones, for example, they all get specced in with just one number for impedance. So everything, you know, gets uh, listed out there at the input or the output impedance of the microphone is just one number measured at a thousand hertz. But the, the real interesting things going on is actually in the low end because as the frequencies get lower, the impedance gets higher, you have more of the, the ability or the possibility to start reflecting back. Voltage 
getting getting a reduction in your low end. Now I will say, you know, it's not it's not quite exactly this straightforward. It's not like that uh, it starts reflecting voltage as soon as it passes the impedance point. The math of all that gets a bit complicated, but this is the general concept. This is what's happening. And so um, this is why if you've got like a piezo pickup or a guitar pickup, something with a really high uh, impedance, high output impedance, and then you plug it into an XLR uh, input, it's going to just sound terrible. It's going to sound super tinny and just lose all of the low end. And that's because you're reflecting voltage basically through the whole spectrum. And then as you get to the low end, you're going to be reflecting more and more and more. And so it's going to just sound really terrible. And uh, that's why, like, if you want to plug a guitar into an XLR uh, line in like a PA, you, you need a direct box because you need something to translate the impedance of that guitar cable um, into a, into something that can match um, the uh, the input impedance stage of, of what you're plugging into because otherwise you mess with the frequencies, you mess with how it sounds. It's not just going to get louder or softer, you're going to be doing different things at the low end than you do at the high end because there's going to be uh, you know, reflection of voltage that it happens more in the low end than the high end. That is the general principle, okay? Um, now, this is also applicable to uh, ribbon mics. This is why I spent a lot of time with this. People say with ribbon mics that you can, um, that it's preferable to use like a, a high impedance preamp, which it is for keeping a lot of the low end. But what's great about this stuff is that once you know it, you can, you can kind of break the rules. You know, once you know the rules uh, really well, you can break them. And so I kind of broke them intentionally with my design of the H44 because uh, the H44 ribbon mic already has a super healthy low end. And so uh, the impedance is actually a little bit higher than you'd normally expect in a ribbon mic. And what that means is that if you use a ribbon-specific preamp, you're going to get a lot of extra low end, uh, which can be useful. Um, but inside of a regular preamp, you get a little attenuation that actually is kind of right where the mic um, is intended to be dialed in. Um, so those things are kind of fun to play with. Anyway, I won't get too uh, into the details with the ribbon mics and whatnot. This is basically uh, the concepts that I wanted to convey. So, um, you know, it's, it's fairly technical, so if you got questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, I'm also going to be doing some follow-up videos, hopefully, on uh, how, th how this stuff actually sounds. So some mic examples um, uh, in a follow-up video. And, it, and if we have enough interest, I might go as far to actually teach you how to measure impedance, because there's not a lot of good uh, information on that online, at least for a microphone. All right, so that is all. Leave some uh, comments or some, some questions in the comments if you'd like. And uh, thanks for stopping by.